Please be seated. Welcome to the Heinz College Diploma and Award Ceremony. So that we may enjoy the ceremony, please turn off all cell phones. Thank you. I am Daniel Nagan, University Professor of Public Policy and Statistics and Associate Dean of Faculty at the Heinz College. I'm honored to preside over this important occasion in place of Dean Krishnan, who will, could not be with us today because his daughter is receiving her bachelor's degree from another college uh, at a Carnegie Mellon University ceremony. Uh, Dean Krishnan sends his congratulations to the graduates, their families, and friends. Our graduates have worked hard to reach this very significant day. Please join me in a well-deserved round of applause for our graduates' outstanding accomplishments. <laughs> These talented individuals did not reach this point in their lives alone. They are supported by family and friends, many of whom are here today to celebrate with them. I would like to ask the graduates to join us in welcoming, welcoming and thanking their family and friends today. Also joining us are outstanding faculty and administrators who have been instrumental in forging these programs and ensuring successes, the success of today's graduates. Will the faculty and staff please rise so that you can be recognized? I would like to introduce some of those seated on the stage today with me. First, the Honorable William Peduto, who is the mayor of the city of Pittsburgh, who will be giving today's keynote address. Brent, Brenda Pizer, Associate Dean of the School of Public Policy and Management. A Andrew Wasser, Associate Dean of, of the School of Information Systems and Management. <laughs> Will Gore, Professor of Public Policy and Information Systems and Program Chair of the Masters of Science of Public Policy and Management Program. <laughs> Bob Wilburn, uh, Distinguished Service Professor and Director of the Heinz College, Washington, D.C. campus. Uh, uh. Rahul Talang, Professor of Information Systems and Chair of the Heinz College Doctoral Program. And then finally, Dave Lasman, Distinguished Service Pref Professor who will give the charge to our graduates today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Mayor Bill Peduto. Mayor Peduto was elected to the office of mayor of the city of Pittsburgh this past November. He had previously worked for 19 years on the Pittsburgh City Council. As a member of the city of council, Mayor Peduto wrote the most comprehensive package of government reform legislation in, Pen in Pittsburgh's history. He strengthened the ethics code, created the city's first campaign finance limits, established lobbyist disclosure and lobbyist registration, and ended no bid contracts. The mayor ran his campaign on a platform of continuing this, the reforms that he began as a councilman. In addition to policy reform, Mayor Peduta has committed himself to revitalizing Pittsburgh through other avenues. From co-creator and co-chair of the city's comprehensive climate action plan to writing legislation to protect Pittsburgh's unique green hillsides. Mayor Peduto has championed the protection and enhancement, enhancement of Pittsburgh's new reputation as a leader in green initiatives. Furthermore, as co-creator of iBerg, the nation's first mobile app for local government, he has led the discussion of e-democracy locally and nationally and has worked with local companies to help them in creating new industry. By establishing community-based development programs and encouraging the investment in niche, indus niche industries, he has been instrumental in building a new Pittsburgh. It is fitting that Mayor Peduto give our keynote address 
today since he has truly understands the importance and power of technology and innovation in tackling today's economic development challenges. Mayor Peduto, we are honored to have you with us today, and we appreciate your taking the time to address our graduates and guests. Thank you. Wow, that's a loud mic. You know, I guess it's not used to a politician. Graduates, congratulations. It's an honor to be here with you, with your family, with your friends. Um, you know, life's funny. Sometimes it's not always the ha-ha funny, but life's kind of ironic. It was about, I guess, 31 years ago that I started out as an undergraduate in a faraway place called Carnegie Mellon. And you know, I tried as best I could to stay in that school. Started with a full scholarship, struggled, tried to get by, changed majors like three different times in HNSS, but I just couldn't do it. And I ended up at Penn State, eventually got my degree, went on to come here to Pitt to get my master's degree. But today I get to stand before you, going full circle back to Carnegie Mellon. And for the rest of your life, you will have the honor of wearing the tartan plaid, the plaid that is on your back today that will have your back in the future. But I want you to remember something, that life isn't always just an uphill climb, that life is gonna bring with it the valleys and the, and the mountaintops. And it's how you handle yourself during those times when you're in the valley that really dictate the character of who you are. You know, people are resilient. They have a way of being able to come back, to be able to re-identify themselves, to be able to, to lift themselves to the moment, and sometimes they don't, because that's the way that life is. And if you think about it, cities are very much the same. You know, there's a movement going on around the world today that the solutions of the problems that we face as a society they are no longer being determined in the federal capitals or in the state capitals, but they're being addressed and solved in cities around the world. And it's the innovation that's being created in these cities that are helping to transform the world and a network being built up that goes across boundaries globally. And Pittsburgh is back on that map. And we weren't for a while, because like people, sometimes cities go through hills and valleys. Pittsburgh has a great story. And you know, the story of Pittsburgh isn't that much unlike the story of cities all throughout the world. We were, at first, a small little fortress town. It's where the French came, and they said, hello, we are here, and this is as far as the new world will go. And along came a young major in the Virginia militia, and he walked across the mountains and through the Laurel Highlands and down along Monroeville, which wasn't called Monroeville then, and build a path that we now call Penn Avenue all the way down to the point. And he said, you know what? The British want this area. That guy's name was George Washington. And George, on his way back in the middle of a night up in the Laurel Highlands, met up with an encampment of French soldiers and in the middle of the night killed a young ensign named Jamonville. And from that, the First World War was started. Seven-year war that they call in Europe, the French and Indian War, as we call it. A war that was fought on several continents. You know why? Because they loved us so much, <laughs> they had to fight for us. And the British won, as we know, and they took on the, this area and the forks of the Ohio, and they set up a new encampment, and they called it Fort Pitt, after the Prime Minister of England, William Pitt. And they built out a grid system of roads that 
was basically confusing because one grid went one way and one went the other and they mishmash in the middle and 250 years later we still have that same structure. But that's what Pittsburgh was. It was a fortress town. It was the western frontier, the farthest point of a brave new world. Until a couple of guys decided to put in a boat that they built in Pittsburgh into the Ohio and their names were Lewis and Clark and they discovered Ohio. <laughs> and all of a sudden there was much more and there was a manifest destiny that said this brave new world will start at one ocean and it will go to another ocean. And people had to think, huh, who's going to build it? And they looked over their shoulder and they looked back to Pittsburgh. And first it was glass and then it was iron and then it was steel and aluminum and Pittsburgh built this country. Every skyscraper and bridge and the materials to build it. The money and the finance that came from one of the wealthiest spots on earth. All of the infrastructure that went in. You know it wasn't about steel, it was about the Bessemer process, it was about innovation. It was George Westinghouse. It was legends like Andrew Mellon, like Andrew Carnegie, like Henley Clay Frick, which I'm very happy, by the way, that Frick did not invest in your university, because if he did, it would have been Carnegie, Frick, and Mellon. <laughs> but it was about the innovation that these people brought. It was about the creativity that they did that built out an entire industry that put Pittsburgh on a map worldwide. We became the global leader, producing 40% of all the steel on earth out of this little area. And with all the great prosperity and all the things that happened, there were still those valleys. There were still those things that were part of the process, that were the problems that we would have to roll up our sleeves and solve. We created air that was dangerous to breathe. We created water that was poisonous to drink. And we created the greatest disparity between the haves and the have-nots, between the owners and the managers of the mills and the mines and the people that went to work at them that this country has seen. But we kept pushing on because we knew in the Pittsburgh way that that little fortress town that became the global giant could reinvent itself again and become something great again. And it did. A mayor by the name of David Lawrence ran on a campaign of cleaning the air and doing work to protect the water and the system so that we wouldn't constantly flood. And in his first term of office, he passed the first Clean Air Act in this country, about 20 years before Congress would ever take it on. And Pittsburgh began a new renaissance. A young woman from the Allegheny Valley who studied up the street at Chatham marched the steps of Congress and demanded that we do more to protect our water. Her name was Rachel Carson. And she became the symbol of a new environmental movement. These are the legends and the giants whose shoulders we stand on just like the industrialists. And they led Pittsburgh into another phase. But it wasn't only them. It was people like my grandfather who came to this city from Italy armed with a second grade education, but an ability to work hard, to use his back, to use his arms, to use his shoulders, to work every day in a mill. And through him and others that stood up and stood together, they created a labor movement in this country that built the middle class, where anyone who worked hard had an opportunity to better themselves and better their children. In Pittsburgh, in Cleveland, in Chicago, in Detroit, the middle class was born. And Pittsburgh went from that little fortress town to the city that was the global leader to the beginning of a renaissance that began to clean its air, clean its water, invest in its people, 
and it started new public policies where they started to build big. A new airport, new convention center, new stadiums, and through a process of years would tear them down to build a new airport, new convention center, new stadiums, in building roads that would go through tunnels and bridges that would take people out of the heart of the region and spread them out to the suburbs and beyond. They would find ways to invest in transportation systems that were based on the automobile and look at urban areas and try to do the same. Tearing down public market houses, gutting neighborhoods, building racetracks around communities, all based on what they believed at the time to be progress through the automobile. And Pittsburgh's prosperity would continue through that era, though. What we watched was the population shift out of the urban center. But at the same time, the economy kept chugging along because of our investment in big steel. Because of people like Andrew Carnegie that understood the entire economy was based on getting a product to market so that our rivers and our rails were the lifeblood of our economy. Until 1979, when I started high school. Great year. Pirates won the World Series. Willie Stargell, we are family. Steelers won their fourth Super Bowl. And Pittsburgh died. The economic heart of this region was torn out from it. We lost more population than New Orleans lost after Katrina. We had higher unemployment than Detroit has today. And we still have a debt ratio of our city budget that is higher than New York City's when they went bankrupt. But there was no federal bailout for us. There was no programs to try to rebuild what had once been. We were Pittsburgh, that little fortress town that became the global giant that went through its renaissance, was now going through its depression. So we did what we knew to do. We brushed ourselves off, and we started anew. Reinventing ourselves through people like President Dick Seyert at Carnegie Mellon, President Posvar from Pitt, putting forth a new agenda that wasn't based on how we were going to reopen the mills, but an investment in one of the only cities in a supercomputer center, an investment in a new life sciences, following up with the work of President Morabian and the Morabian Report which identified industry clusters before the term was even coined, in understanding that although we were proud of our past, we couldn't be locked to it if we were to have a future. 30 years later, you sit here today, and Pittsburgh is a very different city. The seeds that were planted over the past 30 years have not only taken root, they are now sprouting. But that's the thing about cities, because cities are resilient. You can bomb a city. You can burn a city. You can flood a city. You can rip the economic heart out of a city. But a city has the ability to come back as long as you invest in the people. Now. The story of cities are very much the same as the story of people. And today you sit at the top of the mountain and you look out at over everything. With the tools in your hand of the diploma and your education and the knowledge, you're ready to go and solve the problems of the world. I would encourage you to look at cities and look at Pittsburgh as a way to utilize your talent in order to make great change happen but you may choose to do it in other ways, and, and I'm sure that you will, and I'm sure that you'll succeed. But you have to also understand 
that there will be times when you won't. And there will be times that it will be necessary to reinvent yourself. But just like a city, you have to understand that if you're resilient and you invest in yourself, you will succeed. A great 20th century philosopher spoke of this far greater than I ever could. And I brought one of his books with me because I go to it often. And at times like this, I find it necessary to quote from genius. His name is Dr. Seuss. Now, the guys in the back aren't going to be able to see the pictures, but I'll describe them for you as I read it. And if you've already read it, please don't tell the person next to you how it ends. It's called, Oh, the Places You'll Go, by Dr. Seuss. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know, and you're the guy who will decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not so good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out there frequently things out there things can happen and frequently do as people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along. You'll start happening too. Oh, the places you'll go. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a perkly perch, and your gang will fly on. You'll be left in a lurch. You'll come down from the lurch with an unpleasant bump, and the chances are then you'll be in a slump. And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun. Unslumping yourself is not easily done. You will come to a place where the streets are not marked. Some windows are lighted, but mostly they're darked. A place you could sprain both your elbow and chin. Dare you stay out? Dare you go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right? Or right in three quarters, or maybe not quite? Or go around back and sneak in from behind? Simple it's not, I'm afraid you will find for a mind maker-upper to make up his mind. You can get so confused that you'll start into race down long wingled roads at breakneck his pace and grind on for miles across weirdish wild space, headed, I fear, toward a most useless place, the waiting place. For people, just waiting. Waiting for a train to go, or a bus to come, or a plane to go, or the mail to come, or the rain to go, or the phone to ring, or the snow to snow, or waiting around for a yes or a no, or waiting for their hair to go, everyone is just waiting. Waiting for the fish to bite, or waiting for wind to fly a kite, or waiting around for Friday night, or waiting perhaps for their Uncle Jake, or a pot to boil, or a better break, or a string of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a wig of curls, or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. With banner flip flapping once more, you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky, ready because you're that kind of guy. Oh, the places you go, there's fun to be done, there are points to be scored, there are games to be won. And the magical things you can do with that ball, you will make the winningest winner of all. Fame, you'll be famous as famous can be with the whole world watching you win on TV. Except when they don't, because sometimes they won't. 
I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win because you'll play against you all alone. Whether you like it or not, alone will be something you'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. But on you will go, though the weather be foul. On you will go, though your enemies prowl. On you will go, through hack and cracks howl. Onward up many a frightening creek, though your arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far, and face up to your problems, whatever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with so many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact, and remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3, 4 percent guaranteed. Kids, you'll move mountains. So, be your name Buxbum, or Bixby, or Bray, or Mordecai Ali von Alan O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. I was given this book uh, the day, yeah, Dr. Seuss. I was given this book the day after an election in 1991. I had just lost my brother. I had come back home to Pittsburgh. I had ran a campaign for somebody who was running for city council, and we got crushed like a June bug. We lost by so many points, and I was so sad, and I felt, you know, the world, and I was on my shoulders. And a friend gave that to me, and he reminded me that this is just one day. And I, I used that opportunity. I've gone back to this book several times. I keep it in my living room. I read it when things are good. I read it when things are bad. And I remember that it is a journey. It's not a step. It's not part. I think about Pittsburgh and how it's been redefined. 91 is what brought me back home. It set me on a course of working on campaigns for many years. And it was from campaigns that I found that my true love wasn't in trying to get someone elected, but trying to make the change once they were to do the things that I wanted to do. There were times that I thought my political career was over. In 2007 and 2008, I basically had to make a decision of whether I would run for office ever again, even as a city councilman. And it took a lot to be able to say yes, that I still wanted to do it. My dream had always been to be the mayor of the city of Pittsburgh. And in January, during the polar vortex, I had the opportunity to raise my right hand and take that oath of office. My friends said, Bill, we always said it would be a cold day in hell when you got elected. <laughs> I didn't realize it would be negative 15. But it was because I believed that I could do it. I know that you sit here today and you have to be proud, and I know you have family that stands behind you, and God knows how proud they are of you. And I just want you to remember that there are going to be those days when it's going to be tough, when you are going to be alone, when you're going to have to re-identify what it is you do or how you do it or how you go about on a daily basis. And if you think about the cities and how they can change, and you know that you can, as long as you stay on that course and know what direction it is that you want to be headed in and you're ready to take all of the valleys that will come along with it and know that the true measure of your character will come out, not when you're on top of the mountain, but how you handle yourself when you're in the valley. 98 and 3 quarters percent might be a low estimate, the opportunity for you to succeed will be 100. Congratulations. Thank you, Mayor Peduto. It's now time to honor 
the accomplishments of some very special members of the Heinz School community. The first award is a Barbara Jenkins award, Service Award presented to a graduating student who has demonstrated service to he the Heinz Co College and made significant contributions to the quality of life in, in, in the Pittsburgh community. Would Elise Hawthorne please come to the stage? Elise is graduating from the Masters of Science in Public Policy and Management program today. Her commitment to service to the Heinz College community and to greater Pittsburgh, the greater Pittsburgh region is evident through her many different leadership roles <coughs> and volunteer efforts. As volunteer chair and then co-president of the Education Policy Club, Elise engaged Heinz students by creating volunteer events on, in the, at the Education Partnership, which distributes school supplies to underserved schools in the region. While juggling a heavy workload and met in leadership positions at Heinz, Elise also found time to serve as a public ally for the Pittsburgh Public Allies Organization. Elise deserves to be recognized for her service, as stated by a fellow student in a statement of, of support, Elise is, a bound, is bound to be a leader who will fa facilitate great change for all the residents of Pittsburgh. Congratulations on this well-deserved award. Uh, next, I would like to present the Otto A. Davis Award. The recipient of this award is selected by a committee of faculty, staff, and students. The award is given to an individual who exemplifies the college's commitment to social and racial justice. This year's recipient is Michelle Little. Michelle, would you please join me on the stage? Well, while Michelle makes her way to the stage, um, as you can pr probably tell, this is a very well-scripted event, and, uh, <clears throat> and, and Anne, Ann English told me that if I broke from the script uh, that I wouldn't have any heating or cooling in my office for the next three years. <laughs> she didn't know that I don't believe in mandatory, the deterrent effect of mandatory minimums, so I want to uh, at this point acknowledge that Michelle also worked with my faculty assistant Gretchen Hunter, and in that capacity she had to put up with me for two years, so she deserves this award also for that. <laughs> Uh, Michelle served as the co-president of the Black Graduate Student Organization. In this role, she has been the driving force behind collaborations between black graduate, the, the Black Graduate Student Organization and the Center for African Urban Studies and, and the Economy. The new leadership resulted in an event that featured a panel of community leaders from the Pittsburgh Civil Rights Movement discussing racial and social justice issues throughout Pittsburgh's modern history. The event drew in a diverse and cross-generational audience, sparking many engaging conversations between students and community members. A faculty member who nominated Michelle stated, I had the good fortune to meet and work with Otto Davis and know that he would be exceedingly pleased with Michelle's contribution to race and social justice in the university and the community. Michelle, congratulations on behalf of Heinz. It is now my pleasure to present the Student Leadership Awards. This award is presented to two students, one from the, public, uh, the School of Public Policy and Management and one from the School of Ur Information Systems and Management. These stu students are being recognized for their leadership and initiative, excellent act academic achievement, strong communication skills, and exceptional pr uh, promise for future success. This year's recipient from the school from the School of Public Policy and Management is Akeet Agrawal. Will Akeet, will Akeet please come to the stage? Akeet is graduating from the, from the Master's of Science in, in Healthcare Policy and Management program. 
He has served in numerous leadership roles during his, his time at Heinz, managing to lead, mentor, and engage his peers throughout the process. Akeet participated in several case competitions, including the MIT Sloan Pharmaceutical War Game and the Rutgers Biopharm Pharma Case Competition, at which his team won the competition. Akeet's peers attest that he is enthusiastic, motivated, and always willing to help others. As stated by the faculty member who has worked closely with Akeet, Akeet is a true leader who is keenly motivated and willing to work hard to help others achieve their goals. Akeet, thank you for your service to the high school community. And now to present the Student Leadership uh, Award for the School of Information Systems and Management. This year's recipient is Tagori Karaga. Tagori, please join me on stage. We wondered where you were. <laughs> During her time at, uh, at Heinz, Tagori has demonstrated the qualities that make a true leader. She has, uh, she has been active in university issues and has taken advantage of the opportunity to better the Heinz community. In 2012, she was the only Heinz student to attend the largest global summit for women leaders in, com in computing. Determined to open this opportunity to, to her fellow students, Tagori searched for alternative funding options and the next year, 15 women from Heinz were able to attend the four-day summit, many of them on full scholarship. This is just one example of Tagori's self selfless leadership style. After graduating from the Master of Information Systems Management program, Tagori will be joining LinkedIn as, as a product manager in their international division. She will, be continue, she will be continuing her work supporting girls and women around the world in the, STEM, in the STEMS field. As one of her faculty stated, Tagori is intelligent, ambitious, creative, and personal. She, <clears throat> she is destined to be a leader and someone who, will, who should be proud to, to call a graduate, we should call a graduate of our program. Congratulations, Tagori. In addition to uh, receiving the Student Leadership Award, Tagore was chosen by a committee of students, faculty, and staff to, as this year's student speaker. Tagore will now share her reflections on her life at the Heinz College. Thank you so much. So, first things first. we're already here today. As master's students, two years really does go by quickly. For the PhDs, perhaps you thought this day would never come, but we've made it. As I look around the room, I see proud parents, siblings, significant others, mentors, friends. You, my classmates, have worked extremely hard. And you, sitting around us here today, have given us the support and guidance that has made this day possible. In Kenya, where I'm from, they say it takes a village to raise a child. In front of me, I see the proud village of Heinz College. So to you, the village, I say congratulations on a job well done. <laughs> To the children of this village, my fellow students, we are bound by shared experiences. Only those sitting next to you can begin to understand how much pizza we consume on a weekly basis. <laughs> In fact, if I never see a free pizza again, I'll be just fine. We, at this point, we could probably patent an algorithm 
maximizing productivity while minimizing sleep, and controlling for those required YouTube videos. And after surviving Mansai and DMUU, we probably have stake in Howie's hot tubs. <laughs> Whether coming from school, work, or life break, most of us came into Heinz feeling pretty confident. Many in this room were always top of their class, top of their game, high achievers. By the end of the first semester at Carnegie Mellon, I think we all had a shared sentiment. What just hit me? The rigor of the courses, the complexity of the assignments, the high expectations to produce quality work. All this was thoroughly demanding, yet extremely rewarding. Clearly, we made it through our programs. So to you, the children of the village, I say congratulations. Today, I'd like to talk about two fundamentals of life, relationships and responsibility. In her book, Reading Lolita in Tehran, author Azar Nafisi says, you get a strange feeling when you're about to leave a place, like you not only miss the people you love, but you also miss the person you are at this time and this place, because you'll never be this way ever again. My wish for you is that you stay grounded to the person you are today, to your hopes, to your dreams, to your wild ambition. My wish for you is that you use who you are today as a foundation for growth and an anchor for stability. At Heinz, we've had the unique opportunity to spend our time here developing relationships within a community of people from over 80 countries. This is your global village. Look around you. These are the people you are going to change the world with. You're in a position to have a great career and more importantly, to change the world. Now, perhaps more than ever before, being from so many different countries, I challenge us all to use these relationships, these networks to reshape the world in which we live. This could be in Nairobi, Pune, Guangzhou, Baltimore, or Santiago. The responsibility is ours. We've had an opportunity most people could only dream of. The nature of skills we've acquired at a top global university are unparalleled. It is, our, it is up to us to use our skills and talents to uplift as many as we can, and we are all in a capacity to do so. So, whether it is a sense of outrage that drives you, or excitement about the infinite possibilities, we are tasked with addressing the truly important issues of our time, of having great impact. Professor and Nobel Prize winner Toni Morrison says, and I quote, I tell my students, when you get these jobs that you have been so brilliantly trained for, just remember, that your real job is that if you are free, you need to free somebody else. If you have some power, then your job is to empower somebody else. And <laughs> and on that note, men and women of Carnegie Mellon, Heinz College, class of 2014, I challenge you to use your relationships to enhance, enrich, and advance your village. In Swahili, we would say, Boresha Jami Yako, and fulfill your true responsibility. I wish you Godspeed and the very best as you achieve the unthinkable. Thank you. It is now time to recognize our graduates. I ask Rahul Talang, Professor of Information Systems and Chair of the Heinz College PhD program to announce the graduates receiving the Master of Philosophy and Doctor of, uh, of Philosophy degrees today. Rahul.
Will the Master of Philosophy and Doctor of Philosophy graduate please rise and come forward? I'm pleased to present John Gardner with a Doctor of Philosophy in Public Policy and Economics. His dissertation is titled, The Labor Economics of the Great Migration. John is currently an Assistant Professor of Economics at the University of Mississippi. Congratulations, John. I'm pleased to present Sonam Samat with a Master of Philosophy in Public Policy and Management. This is a milestone as she works her way towards her PhD. Congratulations, Sonam. I am pleased to present Yan Wang, a Doctor of Philosophy in Information Systems and Management. Yan is also the recipient of the William Cooper Doctoral Dissertation Award, established to honor Bill Cooper, the founding dean of the Heinz College. This university award is present, presented annually to a PhD student with an exceptional dissertation in management or management science. Yan's dissertation, Essays on the Economics of Crowdsourcing and Enterprise Social Media, was chosen for its new and in insightful analysis on how firms can use social media and crowdsourcing of ideas for new products in productive and profitable ways. Yan is currently a professor at University of Michigan. Congratulations, Yan. I'm pleased to present Luis Quintero with the Doctor of Philosophy, with the Doctor of Philosophy in Economics and Public Policy, a joint degree with the Tepper School of Business. His dissertation is titled Essays on Specification and Estimation of Models of Market for Heterogeneous Housing. Congratulations, Luis. <laughs> Finally, I'm pleased to present Nathan Van Hodness with a Doctor of Philosophy and Statistics and Public Policy. His dissertation is titled, The Efficacy of Hedges Correction for Unmodeled Clustering and Its Generalization in Practical Settings. Nathan has accepted a postdoc position at the Northwestern University. Congratulations, Nathan. Please join me in a round of applause for our graduates. It is now time to recognize our graduates receiving their master's degrees. Some of the students are, are recognized as graduating with distinction, others with highest distinction. Will Program Director Sean Beggs please step forward to read the names of our Masters of Information Systems Management and Masters of Science in Information Security Policy and Management graduates. Associate Dean Andy Wasser will assist with the presentation. Will the Master of Information Systems Management graduates please rise and come forward? Suraj Abachandani. Elena Archaya. Samuel Afari. Ishma Aluwalia, highest distinction. Sinhura Alori. Bo Sheng An, highest distinction. 
Nithin Anatharama Krishnan. Piyush Aneja. Nitin Angri. Adejuan Anjoran. Ebenezer Omotola Anjoran. Vinil Arkapudi. Ishant Aurora, distinction. <laughs> Rohan Aurora, highest distinction. <laughs> Vera Artamanova. <laughs> Pervi Bafna. <laughs> Ananaganesh Balakrishnan. <laughs> Ajay Budwaj. Praneet Reddy Boka, Kushal Budwar, Shuang J. Tai, Yuong Lu Tao, Stephen Hayes Capetta, highest distinction, Suraj Trondraville George, Chili Joy Chen, highest distinction. <laughs> Ching Yi Chen, highest distinction. <laughs> Sheng Long Chen, distinction. <laughs> Xiao Yu Chen. <laughs> Ashish Turkulam Rathidran. <laughs> Dinesh Chatpar, distinction. Rikyo Chiba, highest distinction. Jacqueline Marie Cross. Praktisha Rashaheb Darade. Shovik Das. Sumit Das. Felix David. Vishal Deepak Desai, highest distinction. Prasanna Karthik Danpal. Niha Dar, highest distinction. Hamina Diaz Rodriguez. Jeffrey Brian Dobson. Yu Ting Duan. Alok Dubli, Stephen Paul Durham, highest distinction. Bharat Dutt, Sharavan Davuri, Namrata Dharadkanak, distinction. Ti Yang Fung, highest distinction. Pooja Sunil Gangoti, Shan Shan Gao, Togan Shukru Gangoglu, distinction, Vibhor Gol, distinction, Ruben Dario Gonzalez Leal, Vijayaraj Gopinath, Christine Amelia Gray, highest distinction. Benjamin Gummo. Kartik Gupta. Divki Malind Hanumante, excuse me. Vandana Haredekar. Asita Hima Kumar, distinction. Rempe Iwata, Salman Jamil, distinction. Prashant Jetapali, 
Yusheng Ji, Dai Wei Jiang, Yang Jiang, Nitin Za Joseph, Distinction, Janobia Subhash Chandra Jolka, Karishma Aishak Kanal, Figori Shage Karago, Highest Distinction, Pratesh Ramchandra Karakar, Raul Kashal, Mayank Ketkar, Highest Distinction, Poonam Narayas Kemwani, Bhargav Kodali, Senthil Kumar Konali Kulandavo, Jung Koo, Mishuresh Kulkarni, Distinction, Naveen Mohan Lawani, Christine M. Langston, Savio Lawrence, Distinction, Cheng Yu Li, Distinction, Dayun Li, Shurjing Li, Fei Yang Lu, Highest Distinction, Ing Lu, Sheng Lu, Highest Distinction, Raul Magdam, Sona Malavia, Highest Distinction, Abhishek Narayan Makampati, Rashmi Olam Malaya, <laughs> Laura Catalina Martinez Escobar, Priyank Mathur, Pooja Shamit Mehta, Paulo Sergio Miranda Alvarado, Pala Mishra, Akash Deep Mukujiri, Dapika Mulwani, Kritika Sri Muthu Kumar, Abhijit Badavia Karan Nair, Muralid Haran Arjun Nair, Rohan Nanda, Vishwahara Ravi Kumar Nanduro, highest distinction, Sarmarth Bhagyesh Nariwala, Jatish Sanjeev Nayak, Andre Ng, highest distinction, Bharath Reddy Nukala, C.U. Pan, highest distinction, Sahitya Pandere, Manan Kumar Mahesh Kumar Patel, Tejas Kiran Patwarhan, highest distinction. Alberto Parano. Hejiao <laughs> Che. Dax Randaria, distinction. Guatam Rindinver. Rindinver. Justin Rich. Parath Sangavi. Vivek Sadhasthivam, highest distinction. Andrew David Sauter. Venkata Siva Teja Seti. Bhavik Pravin Shah, distinction. Divya Rajesh Shah, distinction. Sanjana Sharma. Shushma Shetty, Shao Wei Sher, Distinction, Yu Chen Sher, 
Shivani Shiva Kumar, Ankit Kumar Srivastava, Kunal Srivastava, Bharat Singhal, Harshit Singhal, Nirupama Shirvasan, Eric D. Summers, Distinction, Shue Sun, Yuo Sun, Distinction, Sidha Taureja, Suchar Tan, Highest Distinction, Nikhil Taneja, Elisa Pamela Taimes Ledesma, Koglani Kagisho Thobijang, Jaishiv Niramalshin Valgeha, Nikhil Vargesi, Ishan Anthony Viegas, highest distinction. Raul Dadheria Vijay Singh. Sharavan Vijaya Prasad, highest distinction. Gaumi Vishwanathan. Zhao Wong, distinction. Ling Cheng Wei, distinction. Hao Wu, Xiao Yu She, highest distinction. Wei Jun She Yong, highest distinction. Yin Shu, Jyoti Yadav, Diang Xiao Yang, highest distinction. Ying Yang. Zhou Yi, highest distinction. Aaron Yu, highest distinction. Wei Shi Zhang, distinction. Jie Yi Zhang. Luxon Zhang, distinction. Yi Ku Zhang. Xin Zhao. Zifeng Zhao, highest distinction. Wen Zhou, highest distinction. Di Zhu, distinction. Li Zhu, highest distinction. Riza Haran. Vignesh Devadraj. Kassel Saxena, Kong Zhang, King Zhao Her, Zhao Qi Hu, Zhu Yi, Yi Ting Zhao. Please join me in a round of applause. Next, I will ask the Master of Information Systems and Management, Business Intelligence and Data Analytics graduates to rise and please come forward. Varun Reddy Burla. Yu Tao, highest distinction. Xu Cheng. Jing Yu Tui, distinction. Jia J. Deng. Zhu Yang Feng. Krishna Haugen, distinction. Yue Li, distinction. 
Christopher Bernard Pope Schwartz, highest distinction. Archana Ramakrishnan, highest distinction. Sebastian Ruiz Ferrer McGregor. Zinue Wong, highest distinction. Aishue Shah. Athena Xiong, highest distinction. Please join me in a round of applause. Will the Master of Science in Information Security Policy and Management graduates please rise and come forward? <laughs> Amar Shiresh Bosle. <laughs> Maxwell Lewis Blumenthal, highest distinction. Rachel Ann Bachner. <laughs> Jing Jing Tai, highest distinction. Jay Chen, distinction. Furkan Sivalek, highest distinction. Bing Bing Hao. Dong Uk Kim, distinction. Niles Eric Kressel. Shay Fong Leo. Matthew David Moses, highest distinction. Bourbon Novienscha. John James Richards. Kriti Sharma, highest distinction. Sunny Sharma, Dina Marie Schick, Brian Abram Thompson, Mustafa Toran, highest distinction, Khalil Charles Wallace. <laughs> Mia Y. Wang. <laughs> Howard Wen Wen. Travis Milagro Wright. <laughs> si Wang Zhao, highest distinction. Please join me in a round of applause. Now I ask uh, program director Allison Francozzi to come forward to read the names of the graduates of the Master of Science in Information Technology. I would also I would like to extend a, a special welcome to the graduates of the dual degree with uh, uh, tech, tech to Monterey who have come all the way from Mexico, Ecuador, and Colombia to participate in the ceremony. Al Will the graduates of the Master of Science in Information Technology degrees please rise and come forward. <laughs> Kenneth Daniel Aird. <laughs> Sabarisan Anandan. Alan A. Andrick. Manuel Arenas. Fortude Basse. Herman Bastidas. 
Mervyn Bang, highest distinction. Jorge Cipriano, distinction. Patricia Cisneros, highest distinction. Master Sergeant Daniel Allen Kurd, U.S. Air Force. Octavio Delgado. Ram Devolapali, highest distinction. Eric DeFrancesco. John William Fishback. John Kevin Gerling. Narendra Kumar Gupta, highest distinction. James Scott Hamilton, highest distinction. Joshua Ray Headings. Eric Mattingly. J. Robert Miller, distinction. Marcella Mino Escobar, distinction. Carlos Montoya, highest distinction. Julian Ortiz Acosta, highest distinction. Prasad Pumbadi, highest distinction. Naru Raghavan, highest distinction. Ramya Ramesh, highest distinction. Fabian Ramirez. Alonzo Ramos, highest distinction. Adam J. Roth. Dustin Schubert, highest distinction. Giuseppe Shuley II. Madhu Sinasami, distinction. Akshat Kumar Sharma. Radford Shaizaki, highest distinction. Shashikat Sundaram. <laughs> Robert Thomas Taylor, distinction. Benjamin Joshua Walensky, highest distinction. Please join me in a round of applause for the MSIT graduates. I now ask program, program director Catherine Heidemann to come forward to read the names of the graduates of the Masters of Arts, Mag Arts Management, Management Program. Will the Master of Arts Management graduates please rise and come forward. Sophia Sohyun An. Caroline Ruth Brent. Jillian Rebecca Brinberg, highest distinction. Yi Tsao. Angela Bowman Choi, highest distinction. Chong Yun Choi. Andrew H. Cole. Katie Augusta Carella. Diana Swearens, distinction. Kelly Kristen Englert. Kathleen Ann Fallon, highest distinction. Marissa Isabella Finer, highest distinction. Daniel Yuri Gorchinsky. Lauren Renee Harrison, highest distinction. 
Paige Louise Hoffman. Nicole Lucy Houghton. Shannon Huang. Graciela Rose Khan. Distinction. Miao Kang. Seth Harrison Laidlaw. Hai <laughs> Song Lee. Weishi Lee. Ijo Lee. Signa Nicole Lindbergh. Melody Joy Liu, highest distinction. Van Ellen Mitchell. Cha Ching Mo. Marina Elizabeth Moser. Kimmy Wynn. Aaron J. Regal. Laura Megan Sanbuff. Catherine Elizabeth Scouten, highest distinction. Deborah Diane Shearer. Runting Song. Elizabeth Ann Strickling. Su Wang, distinction. Mojun Shu. Wei Yen. Ray Zhang. Yuan Zhou, Ying Zhui. Please join me in a round of applause. I now ask program director Dan Green to come forward to read the names of the graduates of the Masters of Entertainment Industry Management program. Will the Master of Entertainment Industry Management graduates please rise and come forward. Nikila Bakurapanda, Distinction. Olivia Jill Barton, Highest Distinction. Richard L. Beeman. Laurel Nicole Charnetsky. Christopher R. Elder, Distinction. Amar Hansen. Amanda Marie Holtz. Divya P. Joseph. Ashna Kishore, distinction. Jaying Lee. Judy Liu, distinction. Azra Manji. Caitlin Mary O'Leary. Yuri Ramandelli. Michael Richard Vlanich. Agatha Blavi. Please join me in a round of applause. I now ask Jim Jordan, Senior Director of Healthcare Programs, to come forward to read the names of the graduates of the Masters of Science Biotechnology and Management and Management and the Masters of Science in Healthcare Policy and Management programs. Would the Masters of Biotechnology and Management please rise and come forward, please? Priyanka Bagmar, Kyle David Boucher, 
highest distinction. Excuse me. Lesik Senko, highest distinction. Wen Ying Chang. Sanchi Dot. And Vita Carrara. Tanvi Lau. Jeffrey Kuo Lee. Jude Agachuku Oda. Enoch Paulison. Rachita Rana. Yiming Wang. Daniel Joseph Wolf Distinction. Rong Zhu. Please join me in a round of applause. Will the Master of Science in Healthcare Policy and Management please rise and come forward? Dasha V. Adamchik. Ankit Agrawal. Danielle Nicole Babb, Distinction. Maggie Bodan. Jacqueline Christine Calabria. Philip Sign. And Viva Elise Diamond. Congratulations. Kimberly Elizabeth Fierst, highest distinction. Sugan Goyal. Pu Fang Hung, highest distinction. Aaron Albert Isherwood Distinction. Kali Class. Tina Lee. Ying Liang. Yi, excuse me. Sunny Kia Lin, highest distinction. Michelle Allison Little, highest distinction. Erica Elaine Lowry, distinction. Nisha Maharaja. Stephen Morrison Ketter. Rakita Nigam. Brianna Lee Scott. Ruth Ashley Shaw. Aisha Mumani Saraz. Jennifer M. Tharp, highest distinction. Yidawan. Please join me in a round of applause. I now ask Program Director Patty Lee to come forward to, the read, to read the names of the graduates of the Masters of Medical Management Program. Will the graduates of the Master of Medical Management program please rise and come forward.
Michael Herman Kulig. Sharon Lee Dorman. Leonardo Espitia. Alex B. Golden. Vijay Sarati Garantla. Ernest Edward Martin, Jr. John Molesworth. Hugh Van Nguyen. Rajdeep Singh Sandhu. Mohammed Ilyas Yamani. Please join me in a round of applause. I now ask Program Director Katie Dugan Stanko to come forward to read the names of the graduates of the Masters of Public Management program. Will the Masters of Public Management graduates please rise and come forward? Rena Altman, Lindsay Aresti, highest distinction, Margo, Margot Kranz, distinction, Elizabeth Cullinan, Sonia Bott Data, Robert David Jackson. LaShawn James. Nashe Jones. Nihal Kyer, highest distinction. Timothy Kelly, distinction. Ryan Knapp, distinction. Kathleen Latouf. Scott McMullen, Ramazan Oruch, highest distinction, Elizabeth Prada, highest distinction, Rosaline Rushadeen, Emily Randulik, Renee Robinson. Ermine Tevez, Vita Tu, Lisa Vento, highest distinction, Daniel Wright, Tammy Young. Please join me in a round of applause. I now ask Professor Will Gore to come forward to read the names of the graduates of the Masters of Science in Public Policy and Management program. Will the Master of Science in Public Policy and Management graduates please rise and come forward. <clears throat> Ria de Guzman Acuna, highest distinction. Adrianto, highest distinction. Newman Afsal Afridi, distinction. Mian Asan Ahmud, highest distinction. Sawa Sala Amanani. 
Anya Ailman. Raja Farhan Bayram. Zachary David Best, distinction. Peter R. Bruton, highest distinction. Colleen Caldwell, highest distinction. <clears throat> Yu Kao. Anik Ahmed Chima. John Zachary Sacone. Karsti Cubberly. Lyndon Mary Dahlkemper, highest distinction. Ian Blythe Everhart. Nicole Patrice Foots. Patrick Joseph Gibson. Fatma Gursoy. Irma Elena Gutierrez McCalligan. Elise Christine Hawthorne, highest distinction. Kelson Ederich. Laura E. Howard, highest distinction. Let's see. Umar Humayun. William Henry Jaroski III. Robert R. King. Stephanie Elizabeth Lagos. E.G. Lee. Highest distinction. Ying Lee. Yankian Law. Alexis Ann McCune. Waslala Yaska Miranda. Han Ni. Jessica Shea Peruch. Jamie Passanal. Donger Peng, distinction. Emily Patricia Rentschler, highest distinction. Giancarlo Roach Rivas. Thomas Romanov. Emily Elizabeth Sale. Peter Winslow Shuffelin. Chen Shaw, distinction. Adithi Swetha Adhi. Adam Surma. Florentino Hector Soria. Patricia Brianne Stubel, highest distinction. Akira Takazawa. Megan Taub, distinction. Luke D. Taylor. Jamar Thrasher. Sarah Elizabeth Trujillo. Anna Vasquez Trejo. Mark Christopher Vingua. Christopher Daniel Wagner. Maria Margaret Wallace, distinction. Kengtang Wang, highest distinction. Sinu Wang. Amer Shakwar Whitaker.
Miyoung Zhao Claire Wu. Distinction. Zinken Zhu, distinction. <laughs> Weiwei Yan, distinction. <laughs> Amen Zhang, distinction. <laughs> Kiwen Zhang. Please join me in a round of applause. Will the Master of Science in Public Policy and Management graduates in the Policy Analytics track please rise and come forward? <laughs> Trevor Filippiak, highest distinction. <clears throat> Mingyong Jen, highest distinction. Carlos Eduardo Mariegos Oriena. Amy Lynn McCarty, highest distinction. Sudara Ray, distinction. Jiaoming Zhang, highest distinction. Please join me in a round of applause. I now ask Program Director Marie Coleman to come forward to read the names of the, gra the graduates of the Masters of Science in Public Management, Public Policy and Management from the Washington, D.C. track. Will the graduates of the Master of Science in Public Policy and Management, Washington, D.C. track, please rise and come forward. Katrina Daekwon Chan. <laughs> Molly May Chester, highest distinction. Jacqueline Ann Cortez. Matthew DeLeon. Evan Moy Haynes, highest distinction. Matthew Grantham Cool, distinction. <laughs> Bao Jia Lee, distinction. <laughs> Alice Beth McKenney, highest distinction. <laughs> Rahana Iman Mohammed, highest distinction. <laughs> Barna Ozdekin Gunaden, highest distinction. Alexander Joseph Roach, highest distinction. <laughs> Melissa Lynn Scanlon, distinction. <laughs> Daniel Joseph Tesler, highest distinction. <laughs> Alice Martin Tripp, distinction. <laughs> Bradford Michael Van Arnhem, highest distinction. Benjamin Thomas Semasek, distinction. Please join me in a round of applause. Next, I have the honor of introducing distinguished service professor and director of the Heinz College, Washington, DC, Robert Wilburn. Bob has served as an advisor, professor, mentor and leader to the Heinz College and Carnegie Mellon University for the better part of four decades. In the 1980s, he served as a member of the university's board of trustees. 
In the 1990s, he served on the Board of Visitors for the Heinz College, then called the School of Urban and Public Affairs. And again, he came on board for a brief time to teach in our arts management program. In his latest and most significant service to the college, Bob joined us five years ago in a more permanent leadership role to help us in the establishment of the college's first formal branch and program in Washington, D.C. Bob will be retiring this summer after a long and impactful career. His life's work has spanned all areas of public service, from the halls of the Pentagon and White House to the state capitol of Pennsylvania, to higher education, even a brief stop on Wall Street, and then to leading some of our country's most important cultural and historic institutions. We have been so fortunate over the la these last five years to have someone of Bob's caliber and stature working with us in Heinz, D.C. He is an inspiration and a model for so many of our students. But aside from all of his grand accomplishments and impressive connections, Bob's greatest impact on our college and how he will be remembered most by all of us is his ability to connect with people, and especially the students. With his small words of encouragement, his bits of advice imparted after class, and his willingness to share stories of both achievement and failure in order to help our students, the next generation of public interest leaders, as they prepare to embark on their paths. For that, we are honored and grateful to Bob for his many years of working with us. Please join me in welcoming Professor Bob Wilburn to the stage. <laughs> Thank you, Marie. You know, I cannot imagine a more supportive, competent, and dedicated partner than you have been. It's been a joy to work with you. You know, I've been really pleased and proud to be part of Heinz College and Carnegie Mellon University over these past decades. You know, today marks a very important transition for all of us, but especially for our graduates who have completed the most demanding program. And it's just my privilege and honor to offer you congratulations from this podium. And recently, I've had the unique opportunity of working with Medal of Honor recipients in planning a museum and education center as a new home for these American heroes on the Charleston Harbor in South Carolina. There are only 78 living recipients of the Medal of Honor, the highest recognition given for military service. You know, and almost to a person, these are very humble men, insisting that recognition that they have received should be viewed not as an individual award, but rather as representative of all those with whom they have served. The values on which the medal is based is awarded include patriotism, courage, integrity, sacrifice, and leadership. Hearing the stories from these individuals reminds one that ordinary people can do the extraordinary if they place higher values above their own self-interest. And we can all here be grateful that we will most likely never be faced with the choices that these military heroes have confronted. But you know, in another sense, we all face on a day-to-day -day basis issues and situations that require us to display these same values. You will be called upon to provide leadership at work and at home. Your education here before and at Carnegie Mellon University has provided you with the analytical and decision-making tools to make intelligent, informed decisions. How you use those skills will determine if you are truly do make a difference. You know, working with these Medal of Honor recipients has reminded me how important it is to keep the mission, our ultimate purpose, in front of us whether it's the day-to-day -day family decisions, major decisions at work, or life-and-death decisions on the battlefield. 
the values that define our character will be in the final analysis what determines how we can best make a difference. You know, Stephen Covey, in his Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, put it very succinctly when he said, begin with the end in mind. There is nothing more important to being a successful leader than this simple lesson. Have a clear vision of what you want to accomplish. Will help us all raise the bar and do a better job in all aspects of our lives. Now, I've had the pleasure of working with some of you, and I am greatly encouraged by your many talents and your skills. Your decision to enroll in the Heinz College, I think, demonstrated your commitment to contribute to our public welfare, to make a difference. Whether your career takes you in the public or in the private sector, in the years ahead, I really do look forward to following your careers. We're all counting on you to be our future leaders. And again, I congratulations for a job well done and look forward to following your successes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bob. I also want to add that I've, I've known Bob for more than 30 years, and I just want to echo Marie's admiration for all of his accomplishments. He's a remarkable man. Uh, and now and now is the time for the final awards of the day. First, I would like to take a moment to recognize two students who were selected by the PhD committee to receive research paper awards. Uh, will Lindsay Boswick please join me on the stage? I should also add that I take special pride in this because Lindsay's my student. This, the second research paper award recipient, recipient is Melia, Melanie Zavoria. Will Melanie please join me on the stage? This, this award honors Professor Emeritus George T. Duncan, who joined the Carnegie Mellon faculty in 1974 and spent his career advancing the application of statistics and decision-making information systems and social accountability. Melanie Zora receives the George Duncan Award for her paper titled Intergener Intergeneration Altruistic Links, a model, a model family of, con of co residents Melanie also received the Outstanding Teaching Assistant Award for the School of Public Policy and Management. These awards recognize two outstanding TAs, one from the two schools of the Heinz College. According to her students, Melanie has demonstrated exemplary commitment to the success of her students. She empowers students to solve problems on their own and to realize that they are capable of achieving more than they realize. Students say Melanie goes above and beyond her duties as a TA to help her students in, ma in, many possible way, in any possible way. Congratulations, Melanie. The, the Outstanding Teaching Assistant Award for the School of, of Information Systems and Management is to Sonam Soman. Please come join me on the stage. <laughs> Sonam's students say that she has been truly, she's been a truly exceptional TA. She often extends her office hours to meet the needs of students even making arrangements to speak with them, with students over the phone in order to accommodate their schedules. Several students said Sanam was instrumental in helping them gain uh, the thorough compre comprehension necessary to succeed in their classes. Sanam is a very deserving award, is a recipient of this award. Congratulations, Sanam. The Staff Excellence Award is presented annually to a staff member for outstanding service to the college. 
I'm very happy to recognize Ed McAfoos for this award. Please join me on the stage, Ed. Ed is the Director of, Com uh, uh, of Computing Services for the Heinz College. He and his talented staff ensure the Heinz College faculty, staff, and students have access to the computing resources they need, often keeping us ahead of other departments and university in terms of our access to cutting-edge technology. Ed's commitment to excellence has, has not gone unnoticed by students who have praised the quick response time and customer service focus of the Computing Services Department. Ed is a terrific example of what makes the Heinz College an outstanding place to work and study. Congratulations, Ed. The Marcia Way Teaching Award is given to a member of the faculty to recognize outstanding performance in the classroom and commitment to student learning. I am happy to present this year's award to distinguished service professor David Lasman. Dave, Dave has been teaching at the Heinz College since 2005, sharing his distinctive perspectives on organizational management. His lessons frequently draw directly from his 25 years of experience in operations and engineering management. Dave's passion in the classroom is exceptional. A Heinz, a Heinz College student wrote, Dave is one of the best professors I've ever had. He is always willing to help and go beyond the role of a teacher. He is simply outstanding. Please join me in congratulating uh, Dave Lasman. We now reach the conclusion of our ceremony. And, um, oh, <laughs> I've not given uh, Dave, Dave his chance to, uh, to, uh, to, to give his closing remarks. <laughs> That was good. You almost got out of here without hearing me. <laughs> I'm going to try this without reading glasses. Let's see how this goes. First, congratulations to you all. This is a, a wonderful day for all of us. Um, thank you, students, fellow faculty members, and staff for honoring me with this teaching award. Uh, many of you have taken courses from me, and you know how much I love teaching. Some of you would also say I love talking. So it gives me great pleasure to give this address today. I have been tasked with giving you a few words of wisdom and then sending you on your way. I was notified of this award a few weeks ago. It gave me pause. In giving this speech, there is an assumption. The assumption is that I can actually impart some good advice, that I have lived a life that has taught me things worthy of sharing. As it turns out, I have learned a few things. One doesn't end up looking like this, gray and bald, for those of you who know me, without learning something. So here goes. When I was in my 20s, I traveled through uh, Southeast Asia with a good friend, Mike Militello. One day, on the beach of Koh Samui in southern Thailand, Mike was waxing philosophically. He said, I have one goal in life, and that is to not grow up an angry old man. It got me thinking. We all have that one relative in our family, the mean aunt, the nasty uncle, the grouchy grandparent. You know what I'm talking about because we all have them. Okay? These people regret things that should have been. Life did not turn out the way they had planned. They gave up on their dreams. They somehow got sidetracked. Your goal from today forth is to not end up like that relative. At all costs, you want to avoid what I call angry old personism. There are four things, excuse me, four things <laughs> you can do to avoid the affliction of angry old personism. The first is take time throughout your life to think and reflect. Know what is important to you. Know what you value. Live life with a purpose in mind. If you don't know who you are, what you care about, or what inspires you, how are you going to be happy? There are a few specific tools I can recommend to help you think and reflect. First, always have mentors. Talk to them about values and purpose. They will give you advice. They will help you figure things out. They will recommend other people to talk to and books to read. Most importantly, 
they will keep you from making really stupid mistakes. As I look back on my life, I have made some pretty big mistakes when I didn't have mentors. You can actually ask my wife, she's sitting right up there. Although frankly, I'd rather you not to talk too much about that because it's kind of embarrassing. The second thing you can do is keep a diary. Write about events, write about relationships, write about difficult decisions you make. There is magic in writing. It helps us codify what we believe and what we value. Putting words on a page brings clarity and focus to the issues which are important to us. Every now and then, go back and read your diary. You'll be surprised at how smart you actually are. When I read my diary, I often find myself thinking, wow, I actually know something. Or, there is no way I'm smart enough to have figured that out. Someone else has been writing in my diary. The third thing you can do is have annual goals and write them down. This idea came to me from Bill O'Rourke, a friend and mentor I met recently through a board we both serve on, Sustainable Pittsburgh. I wish I had met Bill sooner, because this annual goal thing is a really good idea. Your goal should cover all facets of your life, such as family, relationships, career, even money. Some of mine are eat less sugar and carbohydrates. I'm having a little trouble with that one. Help my wife in the kitchen. I think I'm improving here, but don't ask her. And spread happiness and optimism. I hope my remarks here today make a check mark next to that one. The second thing you can do to ward off angry old personism is keep learning. Never stop. Go to school, read books, join professional organizations. In some, area, in some areas, we have natural abilities. In some areas, we don't. The good news is that with practice, we can learn and develop new skills. About five years ago, Google embarked on an internal study determine the characteristics of their bare, very best leaders in their organization. Google had always thought that technical expertise was by far the most important thing of a Google leader. To their surprise, of the eight very important traits identified to be a good Google leader, technical expertise, number eight. Instead, traits such as being a good coach, not micromanaging, listening, and being results-oriented were far more important. So Google started training its managers on these seven other more important leadership traits. And what happened? A number of their leaders got a lot better. Now, mind you, they may not have become the best, but they became a lot better. Some people, especially angry old people, will tell you, you have either the skill or you don't. You won't get better. I and Google disagree. You may not have that skill right now, but with education, commitment, and of course practice, you can develop almost any skill to a proficient level. The third thing you need to do to keep angry old personism at bay is to embrace diversity of thought. If you really want to keep learning, then you must be open to new and different ideas. Of course, you need to be a good listener. We don't learn by talking, we learn by listening. Any grade school teacher will tell you that. But you also need to be a really good questioner. Questions help people challenge their assumptions. Questions help get everything out in the open. Questions help people think about possibilities. Don't tell people what to do. Angry old people do that. Instead, ask questions and listen. You can't possibly improve your worldview and your decision making if you can't understand and respect where others are coming from. Let me give you an example of why this is important. In my courses, we have a saying, pretend this is Las Vegas. What happens in this classroom stays in this classroom. As a result, students are, feel free to bring their real world, real time problems into the class for discussion and hopefully some resolution. A few years ago, one student, a first time manager, needed some help from the class. She described how one of her salespeople was not meeting his sales quotas and was only calling in customers in one small town, which happened to be the town he lived in. The other people, salespeople were starting to complain, and morale was slipping. She was worried she was going to lose her best salespeople. After a barrage of questions and debating back and forth in the classroom, we had it figured out. In less than 20 minutes, I might add. Our hypothesis? This salesperson was moonlighting. They had a second job. 
That's what we had come up with. This seemed to explain why he never left town and constantly missed quota. A little cynical, mind you, but that's what we agreed on. Well, a week later, this student announced in class that we were right. She confronted the salesperson, who promptly resigned, which solved the problem. I could tell you many other similar stories, but the point is this. If you get a bunch of bright, curious people in a room and allow them to debate, to debate issues passionately, allow them to disagree and argue, it's amazing how quickly and accurately they can diagnose and solve a problem. The old axiom, two heads are better than one, isn't really accurate. I prefer five or six or even 20. Another important element of embracing diversity is expanding your circle of friends and contacts, something you have done here at Heinz. Surround yourself with people who challenge you, with people who are creative. Connect with people outside of your normal circles. It will give you a different perspective. And as you are meeting these new and different people, don't judge them. People are unique and come from a variety of backgrounds. You don't know what they had to deal with in life. And you don't know the circumstances that made them who they are. As we age, we tend to judge people. As we age, we think, we're older, we're wiser, we can judge people safely. It actually should be just the opposite. The more experience we have, the more empathy we should have, and the less judgmental we should be. Which brings us to our last, and the fourth and last thing you need to do to fend off angry old, pes angry old personism is to have the right attitude. If you don't want to be afflicted with angry old personism, then act like a kid. Be, fuel, be full of curiosity, wonder, and enthusiasm. When we were children, it was okay to admit we didn't know something. It was okay to ask for help. It was okay to admit that we were not completely in control. And by the way, it's still okay. Basically, don't be arrogant. Arrogant people think they know everything. They believe they are the smartest guys in the room. They think they have nothing to learn. They think they control everything. Angry old people act like that. They're always telling us what to do and how to do it. Instead, be like a kid and seek advice. When we were children, we shared our toys. I think we need to keep sharing. Share the wealth. Don't be greedy. Life is not a series of zero-sum games. Don't fall into the trap of thinking, I must always get my way or else I'm a loser. There are lots of ways to make the pie bigger for everyone to win, as long as we are willing to share. When we were children, we were optimists. Make a choice to be optimistic. Two months ago, I attended a lecture by James Baylog, an award-winning photographer. He is the director of the Extreme Ice Survey, which surveys glaciers in various parts of the world. He says it is awfully hard to be optimistic in the face of such overwhelming evidence of climate change depicted in photographs of rapidly uh, receding glaciers. And the work is physically very demanding and often dangerous. When asked, how and why do you continue to do this, he replies, I have a choice. I can succumb to cynical despair, or I can be driven by willed optimism. I choose willed optimism. James Baylog is in his early 60s, but he acts like a 20-year-old, driven by the idea that he can make a difference in the climate change debate. He has not succumbed to angry old personism. So there you have it, a prescription for avoiding angry old personism. For those of you who took my class, you know how much I love Pittsburgh. And you know how, on occasion, I do enjoy making fun of the way us Pittsburghers talk. So for those of you who know and appreciate Pittsburghese, let me recap my remarks in Pittsburghese along with the formal English translation. So there, again, there are four things you need to do so that you do not grow up an angry old man, an angry old person, excuse me. First, always take, take time to think and reflect. Yins need to think in that. Second, Never stop learning. Yins need educated. Third, embrace diversity of thought. The world needs fixed with the help of all yins. And fourth, have a positive attitude. It's a slippy slope down to cynical despair. And don't be a jag off. Now, go out into the world, do good things, make a difference, and be happy doing it. Don't succumb. 
to angry old personism. Thank you for listening and congratulations. This time I, uh, we are on script. <laughs> so we've now reached the conclusion of our ceremony and it's time to celebrate with a reception in the, in, in the outdoor plaza. Please remain seated while the graduates, program directors, and faculty leave the arena. But before we leave, let's give the graduates one final round of applause. <laughs> <laughs>